Welcome to Stars and Stripes. Our flag is the symbol of freedom and justice for all. Many brave Americans fought and died for this freedom. America was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. When we allow our Constitution to be destroyed and God is taken out of America, there is and can be no freedom. Welcome to Stars and Stripes. I'm your host, Pastor Ken Jones. My guest today is Michael Carrigan. Y'all, most of you are familiar with him. It's a lot of the things that we're going to talk about today is about what's going on in America and the world. For, for now, we know that things are not going well in America. Our economy is down, and we see a lot of things happening that has not happened in a long time. But before <clears throat> we get into it, I want to introduce you again, those who know and those who don't know, Michael Carriger. Welcome to Stars and Strike, man. Glad to be back. My pleasure. Thank God you. bless you. It's been quite a while. Yes, yes. It's been over a year, I think, hasn't it? Yeah, about that. Yeah. But you know, uh, Mike, there's so much trouble going on in the world today and people don't understand. One of the things we talked about before, about the Green New Deal. What, tell us what's going on with that and where are we now today? Well, nothing happens in a vacuum out here. The, the Green New Deal is part of an overall agenda of the world elites, okay? And they're using this as a tool to push forward their dominance uh, in world control matters. Amen. And uh, so, in other words, it's one of their tools. And uh, they have pushed it and pushed it. <coughs> and uh, uh, knowing that most people don't understand what it's really all about. And uh, there is like Hitler used to say, you know, he, uh, he, he didn't believe in a small lie. You tell a big lie. Because you get in just as much trouble with war for a small lie as you can a big one. Amen. And there is, if you're going to rob something, don't rob a candy bar. Go rob a, go rob a big bank or something. <laughs> and that was, that's how he thought. And he believed in the big lie. And if you told a big lie long enough, over and over, that the people would believe it. Right. And of course, we found out that was true because we had World War II. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how these people operate. And I'm not going to mention any names because we already had one show taken down because they said that it was fake news. But the only thing is that news came straight from Congress. All I did was repeat what was in Congress. Amen. But these people control the news media. They control uh, all the outlets of conversation out here. So you have to fit in with their algorithm, which I hope I don't violate, so this show doesn't get taken down. <laughs> okay. And, that, and uh, you have to remember that this group of people control, we're not going to talk about them today, we're going to talk about one of their, one of their programs, which is the Green Deal. But they control, this little small group at the top, control over $500 trillion worth of stuff in the world. They control enough stuff to pay off the entire debt of this country and this whole hemisphere and all of Europe. That's a lot of power. Amen. And uh, they control the world economic forum, the world industrial forum. They control the banking system. So anyhow, but they don't control the public yet. That's and, the next and, step. And, and that's the next step. They want to control the world population. That's you and me. Mm -hmm. That's us. And they have to convince us to let them control us. And the biggest tool that they use is fear. F-E-A-R. Fear. False Eco evidence appearing real. Yeah. And economic fear. War fear. Rumors of wars and wars. Uh, now, now, now it's food crisis. Now it's, in other words, it's always a crisis to keep the people's mind locked in on fear so that they cannot think logically to figure a solution out. You just hit on something. You're saying fear, okay, and you're saying food. 
two F's. Yeah. What are they going to do with the food that you feel that is happening now in the process of not having any food? Well, <laughs> through great big corporations, the family farms around the world have pretty much disappeared. And that's all the battling that you see going on in Europe that's not being reported in the press because they own the press. And so they don't want you to know how the farmers and independent business people are revolting against the EU government. And uh, before we get into the Green Deal, let me show you how hypocritical and disease-minded these people are. I call it a, it's a disease. Anybody mm -hmm. that thinks like this yes. and has no value for human life of any kind, uh, that's a diseased way of thinking. Amen. I don't care if you're a billionaire who you are, you've got a diseased mind. While the farmers in Europe and others were protesting and doing everything because they do not want the, they, they are taking away the farms from the people. Then they're not allowing them to use their equipment to grow food. Then they want to restrict their fertilizer use so they can't grow food. And then they want to limit their energy all in the name of saving the planet, the green agenda. <laughs> we got to save the planet. Of course, the people don't have the energy to heat their houses, so that means they're freezing to death. Right. Uh, they don't have the food to eat because they're, star they're starving to death. Now, these elites that run the EU government and the other governments, you know, the, the individual governments, they're telling these people literally that they're not going to be eating meat, that's going to be taken out of their diet, that the, that the dairy products are going to be taken out of their diet, which is the same thing they're telling us here in America. It's the reason why all the cattle herds have been butchered. Meat's coming off the agenda in the shelves in this country. Okay, good nutritional beef, meat that we need to have in the diet. Uh, you can't live totally vegetarian, that's another subject, we're not getting into that. And, but while they were doing that, these elites, a tape leaked out, and if you were sharp enough to be on the internet, you would have seen it, and I saw it, and I just credit God for leaving me there to see. While they were protesting, these people were suffering by the millions. Guess what the elites were doing? In France, they were all meeting, and the only place I could think of where the hall was big enough to have a table at least 100 feet long was in Versailles. They must have been meeting in the Palace of Versailles. They were having a dinner there, and you should have seen the fine clothes they were wearing. You should have seen some had crowns, diamond crowns on their head. I mean, we're kings and queens. There was no lack of food on their table, and there was no lack of wine. There was no lack of anything. They were eating the finest of the finest that the world could produce in food. While they're telling the European people, you can no longer have meat, you can no longer have dairy, you can no longer grow it, but you are going to grow and start eating bugs. Literally, eating bugs. That's what they said was to be their diet. And that's what they're trying to push over here on us in America. Except I think Americans have a little bit more grit than what the uh, Europeans have. I'm sorry for my brothers and sisters in Europe. You ain't got enough grit to take these people out of power. Then you're asking for all of this and you're going to get it. Because they, they have come out and literally said that this is what they're going to do. And now they are passing laws over there to do it. And believe it or not, some of those laws have come here through the Green Deal. Mm -hmm. They're all ready here. They've already discussed it. Anybody that listens to the 6 o'clock news, and people here don't understand how they're going to be impacted. It's not just electrification of the cars. It's going to be of the houses. It's going to be across the board. It's going to be in the food supply. It's going to be everywhere. And what you're going to find, it, anybody that knows how this works, it does not work. And it's part of the agenda of fear to push people into a corner where they're easy to control. Right. And so uh, the first thing that we have to talk about is that they, uh, is climate, what they call it, the uh, climate change. Yes. And that's, that's what the Green Deal rests on. Well, what is climate change? They never really tell you what climate change 
is, because we already figured it. We know God controls the climate, but I call it climate control yeah. of people. That's what I. That's where I look at it. You do too. It's about control because now they're making us as a subject. You must pay to breathe. They're gonna charge you for air now. Oh, that's that's the carbon tax. That's all part of the carbon tax through the UN. So at any rate, uh, uh, you can, you can scare people. And the, the Green Deal. Nobody tells you what the green, what climate change is. Now. When I was in school in the sixth and seventh grade, believe it or not, they actually used to teach kids stuff back in those days. Yep. They actually used to teach math, real history. A lot of history they're teaching nowadays is so twisted the kids don't know what history is. They taught real math, real English, so that kids could speak. Now kids get out of school, they can't even write their names. They don't the kids the compared today, and I don't blame them, no. Nope. I'm not talking down to them. No. It's not their fault no, that, the, that the parents and the adults have allowed the educational system to go down into the dumpster of the world. But when we graduated, we knew how to read, we knew how to write. We could get out there and as children in the seventh grade, run a lot, run a business. Maybe right. not like a professional, right. but we knew how to work cash registers. We knew how to add change and do, we could do it. These kids nowadays can't do it. They're vulnerable. And so anyhow, a people that cannot think, and their brains are not trained to think, they're easy to control. That's Amen. Right. Amen. So now then, they don't question, what is climate change? I'm going to start off with, as you heard, heard me say in past programs, when has the climate ever not changed? <laughs> You take core samples, the climate has always changed. This is a dynamic world. If it was not dynamic, you couldn't live here. And have to give a, a, a basic idea. You got the earth. It's got a basic molten iron core. That core, that earth is spinning. Anything that anyone that knows about uh, alternators or knows about generation, when you take Take an iron, you can make magnets, and then you spend it, you can create an electrical field. Right. But that's what generation is all about. We have a huge generator that we're living on. It has a huge, take the earth, it has a huge magnetic field around it. Electrical field. Just like the wires running near your house, you can, you can actually take film and film to film with special type of, and see how big it is according to how much power is there. The human body works on electricity. You can see the electrical field with certain types of film in right. the electrical body. So at any rate, what it is, is you've got this huge dynamo. And uh, it's moving through space, and it's moving around the sun and in a system. Then this system is moving around a bigger system, and that system is moving around an even bigger system. So you've got one dynamo after another dynamo after another dynamo, and they're all affecting one another. Nobody ever wants to talk about this. Then, and, and then there, there are, are stages that they go through, cycles. Everybody knows about cycle of electricity. Uh, my brother over there who's an electrician, you know, you've got uh, like 120, 60 this way, 60, there's cycles. Well, everything is cyclic. And so the earth is cyclic. Now you've got to look at the earth. The earth has this core. That core does not sit still, it moves. Okay, all kinds of forces are acting on it. You have the force of centrifugal force of moving, of the earth turning. Then you have it where the axis tilt. So here you got it turning like a top and then it's going like this too, you see. Now it's revolving around the sun, a huge magnetic field of the sun, that's fluctuating, that's Amen. not always exactly the same. Then you have planet alignments that's pulling, like Jupiter and things that are pulling on. And they say, well, that's minuscule. They say, that's minuscule. Well, yeah, well, it is minuscule. But in the same token is, what is the minuscule? So many trillions of watts that we can't even calculate the number of zeros behind it. So you've got to look at what is minuscule. Can I ask a question? <laughs> Not to cut you off, but I wanted the question I have. 
with all of these going on, did, is man in control or God? Well, I'm trying my best not to be religious here. But okay, since I <laughs> am a minister, I'm going to have to say that in my core belief, uh, obviously God's in control. But I'm trying not to go there today. Well, the book of Genesis gives you an idea. God created heaven and earth and all flesh. And he created the earth basically for man to be planted there to take dominion. I know that, but see, today I'm not trying to be religious. I'm You're not? That's not religion. That's fact. I know that, <laughs> but, but see, a lot of people don't consider that. So what I'm trying to do today is take a totally secular path that nobody can shoot down because it's just plain fact. Well, no one that. A man can't take an earth, make it, and he's on the earth. How can you take something that you are living on and talk about, what about the galaxies? What about the sun, the moon, the stars? Well, see, I'm Man could not do that. They know that. This is all common sense. That's all. And for to make it saying that the climate is in trouble. Well, you don't have no authority over the climate. Well, I want to try and stay secular because of the very simple fact that people say that when you put... I want to say religion. This ain't the right way to say it. Well, you're twisting things. How do you believe it? So I'm saying, I can get into that subject if you want me to. I have no problem. I, but I want you to dispute all of this. The fact of the matter is, is that the earth goes through cycles. Now, in all my great artwork, <laughs> I drew a little chart here. The earth goes through a 13,000 year cycle, which in the end winds up being 26,000, okay? Let me get my little pointer out of here if I got one, and pen. And uh, I drew a little graph. Now this right here is the baseline. You gotta have somebody to start. Now in this 13 year cycle, the earth is, let's, we'll start at this point. It's getting hotter, 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 and it reaches its peak. And then it starts getting colder, 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 colder. Then you get down here cold. Then it starts all over again. From, from here to here is 13. From there to here is 13,000 years, 13,000. That's the cycle. To go from peak to peak is 26,000 thousand years. That's the cycle. That's the cycle of the core. Now tell me something. How are we, how are we going to stop this cycle? You can't. That's just a scientific fact. That's just the cycle the earth goes through. Well guess where we're at right now? We're at the we're in the peak area of the half of this planet going through this cycle. We're at one of these peaks right now exactly where in one of these peaks nobody knows for sure but we're right in that 13,000 year peak they tell you that climate change we got to cut the carbon in the atmosphere zero carbon well i'm going to answer that in a minute okay guess what and you know the real true scientific <laughs> facts about the thing the reason the glaciers are melting and everything you see the earth is heating up underneath the soil the heat is coming from up it's going through the cycle of heating and it's all the glaciers are being melted from the ground up not from the carbon and everything that we're putting in the earth it's being melted from there that's where the heat's coming from okay and they don't tell you how many volcanoes have come alive they don't tell you how many volcanoes have come have come alive and are alive in antarctica they don't tell you that all that heat mm -hmm. and all that debris from these volcanoes that's going up in the air. They don't tell you about that, you see. And as it gets hotter and hotter, notice when you get down here to the cycle, now you're into an ice age. You're going into an ice type age, yeah, which we know about. But they, they don't ever talk about this part, okay? And so this is where we're at now. So you can expect it to see things get hotter. It doesn't matter whether we burn another lump of coal. It doesn't matter. We crank up another automobile. It's here in this part of the cycle. 
right now. Okay, I can bring the Mayan calendar into this. Remember 2012. Oh, the long count was talking about this, this cycle. That's the long count. Okay. Now then we're going to get into the universe in a little bit. So we're into that cycle. Now there's another cycle that we're into that they don't want to talk about. This is the galactic cycle. Now I got a picture if they could come in of Mercure. Now you get some Hubble satellite, this Hubble photographs, but these are of uh, uh, galaxies, mature galaxies. Can can you get them in there? I want the people to see. You get much better pictures than this. Let me know at the cameraman. You got them? Yes. You sir. notice how they're formed? They kind of look like UFOs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That seems to be the standard form of but mature, okay, mature galaxies. We live in a mature galaxy, average size, by the way. There are those a lot bigger than ours and those a lot smaller than ours. And, and, but, and those, the, the rays from that galaxy, is that like the sun hitting it? Well, and, and, and you can see where it expands. We're going to be getting into that. Mm -hmm. So now I'm looking at a galaxy from the side. Uh, I hope everybody appreciates my art. <laughs> Now then, here's the center of the galaxy over here. This is about how it shapes, what kind of look like from the side. We sure got. We live in the outer realm. We live out here. Life like ours can't really live too close to this here because of all the radiation and everything that comes out, especially gamma radiation. Now here's looking at the galaxy from the top. We live in the outer rim, just like this. It takes approximately 52,000 years to make a complete orbit around like this. That's a cycle. That's just the way it works. That's a cycle. Okay. So we live out here in this outer room. Okay. Now let's get down here. Did you notice 52,000 something interesting about that? 13,000, 13,000, 13,000. What's four times 13? 52. 52. How long does it take to go around the galaxy approximately? <laughs> Is that interesting? Now, let's look at how the Earth goes around the galaxy. It doesn't go in a straight line. Just like the moon does not go in a straight line around this, the Earth, just like the Earth doesn't go in a straight line around the sun. Nothing goes in a straight line. So now we're looking at the, we're looking at the galaxy again. From the side. Here's the Earth. Here's the galactic plane. In other words, the center. Galactic plane. The Earth moves in a serpentine motion, just like this. It has to do with gravity and just the way things move. It's just that simple. It has to do with gravity and the way it moves. So, now then, as it's moving like this, here's the neutral area. Guess what? We are moving in a part of this plane, in a part, where we're more directly in line with the center of the galaxy. Now, when you're at, a, when you're at with the bottom, or you're at the top, mm -hmm. in this curve, you're not directly in line. In, it, right. in line. Now, what does that mean? Well. The scientists don't tell you this, unless you get the ones that aren't on the payroll of the governments or the elites. The whole solar system is warming up. Ice is melting on Mars. The temperatures are going up everywhere. Oh, I suppose that's climate change. Yeah, I guess it's solar. I guess it's uh, our solar system climate change, right? The un unfortunate <laughs> thing, man cannot control this. And therefore, our, in, in, in fact, we understand that the galaxies, there are many galaxies. The thing about it is here, man cannot control it. He's still looking at the galaxy because he does not know how it really works. Well, He's what's learning. Happening, what's happening is, and they already know this from observations, in the center of the galaxy is a black hole. 
acts like a vacuum lamp. And when it gets too full, they actually have pictures where they took their galaxy, spit stuff back out. And this stick stuff that we're talking about. <laughs> Galaxies are so huge. What I'm saying is this is what works. The thing of it is, as you get closer to the center, what's coming out of the center, the mm -hmm. working inner parts mm -hmm. of the galaxy that you see, like I tried to show here, this bright light. Here's one that really shows. You see how bright it is. All this energy, a lot of that is gamma, gamma radiation. If you ever worked at nuclear power plants like I have, you learn about gamma radiation. Gamma radiation, when it hits objects, it heats them up. It's just that simple. It would get hot. Okay? So where are we now? We're in this 13,000 year cycle of hot, right up in here. Not only that, and this is what the Mayan calendar in 2012 was so excited about and everything. The long count. We are right on this line to receive the maximum amount. Mm -hmm. We're in this cycle to receive the maximum amount of gamma radiation from the center of the, of the galaxy. And those are two cycles that we can't stop. We don't have any control over. Now what do those cycles do? What do they do? Just these cycles do. We're not even talking about the sun now. What do these cycles do? You're talking about so much energy per square yard until I don't even know what the energy is. I mean, I used to have a, a, a chart that showed the energy and it was so <coughs> fantastic to remember. What do you have? You now have all this energy coming in, hitting the earth. What's it doing? It's got an electric, it's got an iron core. Is that, is that heating up? Mm -hmm. Now the iron core is not static. It doesn't just sit there. It moves. We're going to conclude for now, but join us again next time on Stars and Strike. I've been your host, Dr. Ken Jones. God bless you and have a pleasant day. I trust you enjoyed today's program. Please contact your congressman and let him know you are displeased with our Constitution being butchered. Remember to pray for America. Be strong and of good cheer. Remember, America is worth fighting and dying for, as is Jesus our Lord. Until next time, this is Kenneth T. Jones saying, so long, friends.